You know it's going to be a great day when you pick up a case and the judge is shooting down the gun control law and says this, quote, this unreasoned comparison fails, end quote. What are we talking about? We're talking about United States versus Ayala. We're talking about Florida. We are talking about the prohibition against possessing firearms on United States post office property. Guys, let's get into it. So most of you know that it is illegal to possess firearms when you're on federal property, specifically to include the United States Postal Service. And that includes whether or not you are a patron or an employee. Well, the United States indicted Mr. Emmanuel Ayala, who was a postal worker, for possessing a firearm in a federal facility in violation of 18 United States Code Section 930 Sub A. Mr. Ayala argued that the statute, that's the law, is unconstitutional as a applied to him because of the historical record lacks sufficient support for banning firearms in post offices. Now recall that 18 USC 930 sub A, that's the law we're talking about, bars possession in federal facilities. He's talking about as applied to post offices to be specific. Now relying on what's called dicta, which is kind of throwaway phrases perhaps that are not centered on ruling, the United States government, that's the prosecutors, responded that the Second Amendment allows it to punish the bearing of arms inside any government building. But the Supreme Court has been clear. The government must point to historical principles that would permit it to prohibit firearms possession in post offices. So let's go into a little bit of the facts. Mr. Ayala worked for the U.S. Postal Service, as already mentioned, as a semi-truck driver, hauling packages out of the facility located in Tampa, Florida. On September 14th, 2022, Mr. Ayala wore his fanny pack with the gun inside as he walked from the employee parking lot, through the metal turnstiles, and into the post office. After he clocked in, two agents from the U.S. Postal Service Office of Inspector General, that's kind of like cops, basically, for the post office, stopped him and tried to detain him. Mr. Ayala fled, but was eventually arrested by officers from the Tampa Bay Police Department. And so here we are. So Mr. Ayala was charged in possession of a firearm on a federal facility. He brought a number of legal defenses to this claim, but we're going to focus on the one that really was the only one at issue that the court brought up, which was squarely and exclusively the Second Amendment issue. Now let's super fast roll through some of the Bruin analysis. If a law seeks to regulate a Second Amendment protected right, then it must fall within the nation's historical tradition of regulating firearms. It is the government's burden to show that the law is supported by history and tradition. And those historical analogs derived from that history and tradition, they cannot just be tiny examples, but they must be representative of the nation's tradition. So for instance, if a few cities somewhere, somewhere along the line, prohibited possession of firearms in a post office or something like that, that may not be representative of the entire United States tradition as an example. So we have to take a look to see what's a large slice of the pie here. Now this is true where the law is not dealing with something that's been previously unknown to history. Now the Supreme Court has repeatedly said that an adult individual who seeks to carry a firearm is the very essence of the Second Amendment. So there is no dispute that the federal statute that criminalizes possession of a firearm in a post office or on USPS property will need to pass the historical tradition test. Moreover, the government cannot claim that the post office is something new or that crime is something novel and therefore this really should fall outside the history and tradition test because, hey, if something like a new challenge or new issues being faced, then we cannot reasonably expect there to be any kind of historical analog from history and tradition, in which case we enter entirely different territory. Let me know if you want me to make a video on that. But suffice to say, post office, not something new. It was actually founded by the Second Continental Congress based out of Philadelphia in 1775 at the beginning of the American Revolution and appointed actually Benjamin Franklin as the first postmaster general. The post office department itself was later created in 1792 with the passage of the Postal Service Act. It was subsequently turned into its own independent federal agency in 1970 with the Postal Reorganization Act as a response to broad postal worker strikes that started in March of that same year. 
Now, just as a fun fact, while we're talking about post offices and still somewhat relevant to the case, presently, the post office employs 635,000 individuals, of which about 516,000 are noted as being in career positions. If anyone hits that in jeopardy, thanks to this video, please be sure to give me a shout out. So the bottom line here, post office, not something new, not a recent creation. There's plenty of opportunity for regulation throughout the history of the United States at either the federal or frankly, even state level. Super fast, super short, show your support for the second amendment in this channel. It's absolutely free. Be sure to hit that like button. And also if you just found us while browsing through, you like to see content like this and a lot of the other stuff we cover, be sure to hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos. Now back to the show. Now the history and tradition test is not a blank slate as we see here compared to many other areas where for instance, federal or state entities are attempting to ban carry or weapons or banning specific weapons or accessories and so forth in different areas. This is because the Supreme Court in the 2022 Bruin decision that spelled B-R-U-E-N for those of you on your lawnmower said that there is such a thing as a sensitive place whereby the government can legally prohibit the possession of firearms. So sensitive place, this is where the government can prohibit as opposed to private property, where the private property owners can prohibit in many circumstances. Now the Supreme Court explicitly blessed a short list of categories as being okay to ban firearms in, and then left the door open to consider analogous or similar locations to those sensitive locations. So in essence, the Supreme Court basically got the ball rolling by saying, okay, these specific locations are okay to ban firearms per history tradition, as well as other places similar and analogous to these. So what are the places where the government can do that? Well, the Supreme Court noted that these places are simply obvious, undisputed, and uncontroversial. Their words, not mine. These places are one, certain government buildings, such as legislative assemblies or courthouses, where the government is acting within the heartland of its authority acting within the heartland of its authority, two polling places, and three schools. And again, Bruin further instructed courts to consider analogies to these sensitive locations when considering whether the government can meet its burden to show that, hey, this falls inside the nation's historical tradition. So for instance, one court recently said that a playground that's close enough to a school. Again, I'm not saying that, I'm saying that a court said that but that kind of gets you going about what we're talking about here. So the government, in order to defend the constitutionality of this statute, will need to show that the post office either directly is one of the aforementioned places. In other words, the post office is a school. It's a polling place. Not that I've seen it at any rate. Or more likely, it's a certain government building, such as a legislative assembly or courthouse where the government is acting within the heartland of its authority. What was the government's blistering argument from history and tradition to support that criminalization of firearms on USPS property? As the judge noted in the decision, quote, the United States responds that the Second Amendment allows it to punish the bearing of arms inside any government building. End quote. Right. That's basically saying, well, the law is constitutional because we passed a law. And it's constitutional because it's right there. 18 U.S.C. 930 sub A. It's constitutional. It's there. We passed it. Thankfully, we have some judges and courts who have a level head about them to pat them on the head and say, no. So the first thing to be understood, as already mentioned again, 18 U.S.C. 930 sub A, we're dealing with prohibition of weapons on federal facilities, of which, of course, a post office is one of them. So to this point, the United States, according to the judge, concedes that, quote, there is no evidence of firearms being prohibited at post offices specifically or of postal workers being prohibited from carrying them, in other words, firearms, at the time of founding, end quote. And the judge went on to write, quote, despite the opportunity to present supplemental briefing, the United States fails to point to sufficient historical evidence supporting Section 930A's application here, end quote. Now, what is the judge referencing with respect to supplemental briefing? So the judge ordered the parties, including the prosecution, that's the United States, to provide basically all these examples to you know, give us something here. Give the judge, give the court some sort of argument that falls what the U.S. Supreme Court has said, the historical tradition test. And that's where, of course, the government said, well, it's legal because it's a law and it's been out there. And the judge said, nice try, 
give this a second shot. So they came back a little bit and they cited some different laws. I'll get to that in a minute. But it's also relevant to point out when it comes to what the judge commented on with respect to, look, it's not like the post office prohibited postal workers from carrying firearms. The postal office actually armed employees in many different cases. The threat of crime against postal employees is far from novel. That's what Mr. Ayala is talking about here. He wanted to carry a gun so he wouldn't be a victim of crime. Since the post office's creation, mail carriers have faced the risk of violence, not only in this country, but in every country. Passengers of 19th century, stagecoaches, which carried mail, quote, risk death or injury if coaches were attacked by robbers or Indians, end quote. That's from a book talking about the history of the post office. Recognizing this reality, Congress in the first half of the 19th century appropriated money to reward individuals who helped apprehend postal robbers. In the latter half of the 19th century, so the late 1800s, when locomotives became the dominant way of moving the mail, bandits started to target and threaten postal workers aboard trains. In fact, when the mail train robberies became a growing threat to the early 20th century post office, the postmaster general actually started arming railway mail clerks with government-issued pistols from World War I. The bottom line is this. Although the general societal problems of violence directed towards postal employees and threats to mail delivery have persisted since at least the founding, of course, well before that, there is a lack of distinctly similar historical regulation addressing that problem, said the court. Lastly, the United States argues that there are some founding era laws that prohibited arms in legislatures, mm -hmm, polling places, okay, and courthouses. That's wonderful. So they read the Bruin decision, basically, at least in part. Maybe they didn't understand it, but they read it at least in part. As the Supreme Court explained, there were, quote, relatively few, end quote, such laws. That's from Bruin, page 597, if there's any prosecutors using this video for your, your crib notes. After offering this smattering of evidence as the judge described it, the United States proposes that prohibitions on carrying arms into the centers of government deliberation, so we're talking about legislatures, people who pass laws, those existed at the founding. You can't carry firearms into Congress, okay. And because of that, the United States, the prosecution concludes by basically proclaiming post offices and other government buildings are, at a minimum, analogous. Right. This is where the judge drops that line. I opened with, quote, this unreasoned comparison fails. Now, the judge does a great job of going and diving into the historical records, going all the way back to the statute of Northampton. So we're going back to the 14th century and so forth. It does a lot more than what I see most judges do in most decisions, which was fantastic. I do want to make a note that this is not precedent setting. So don't go carrying firearms in your post office, open carrying and saying, I'm going to be good because I saw this video on YouTube. No, this is a federal district court. This is a trial court. This is not a precedent setting court. And rest assured, I suspect that this will be appealed and we will follow this. If you guys want, let me know in the comment field below. So before we get to our quote of the day, if you've made it this far, please show your support for the Second Amendment in this channel and us covering these sorts of videos. Hit that like button. It's absolutely free. And like I said, it does a lot to help us out. Look forward to joining you all in the discussion in the comment field below. Now to our quote of the day. Quote, strong minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, weak minds discuss people, end quote. And if you're one of those people who always buys those tabloids in the supermarket checkout line, don't get angry at me. That was from Socrates. Guys, link to the case in the description box below. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.